What's up everybody, my name is Kenny, behind me is my 2016 Honda Civic, you probably recognize the hat, that only means one thing, let's talk about cars, yo, hit it! Okay guys, so the whole point of this video is I want to go over the whole car, talk about it a little bit, I've had this car for over over a year now, and I wanted to make it kind of fun. Obviously, you've seen the hat, you've heard the intro. I'm kind of make this a little bit like a Salamandran style review. And no, by no means is this going to be a full-on parody of uh, Salamandran. I just thought, what the heck? I'll try to make it fun. He's a big guy in the car universe. I had the opportunity to meet him back in October at the YouTube callout. If you haven't seen any of those videos, go check it out. Um, but without further ado, let's go walk around the car and take a look at it. Okay guys, so as mentioned, this is the 2016 Touring model, and one of the ways you can tell it is a Touring model, obviously if we go to the back here, you see the badge that clearly says Touring, but say someone has this car debadged, you're not sure which model it is, the well, easy way to tell that is the top level trim is all the chrome pieces. So you have the chrome door handles, you have the chrome wrap around all the doors, we have the chrome right along the grill at the front, and we have the fog lights down at the bottom as well as the upgraded 16 inch alloy wheels now this being the top level trim it is also the turbo as you can see right there with the turbo badge so this car the new standard engine is in the on the lineup is the 1.5 turbo engine the lower end models come with a 2 liter engine but I think if you want to get the best car for your money the 1.5 is the way to go now it's only a 1.5 liter engine, but this car makes 174 horsepower and 162 pound-feet of torque, which is an improvement over the old car, which had a 1.8 liter engine, only making 140 horsepower, and I'm not sure what the torque figures are, but I know they're a lot lower than the, than the turbo. Now, while it not, might not seem like that much, this car isn't the quickest in a straight line, um, but it handles well, and because of the turbo, uh, there is a little bit of turbo, la turbo lag, but once it picks up, this car actually goes pretty quickly. And there's a lot of companies out there that make tunes and stuff for it. So you can easily boost the power up a lot more than it is stock. Okay, so one of my other favorite design features of this car is the headlights. Now, I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see it on camera. But apart from lo looking really nice, they are uh, super functional as well. They're LED lights. They have a lot of light uh, that hit the road. And even the running lights and the high beams are really, really good. And even the fog lights, while not the brightest lights, they do give you that extra sort of wave of light low on the car to help you see where you're going. And they are super effective in the fog. Okay, now with this model being the highest trim level that there is for this car, it comes with a whole host of features that come standard on it. And one of the most attractive things I like about this is the keyless entry and remote start system. So to use the keyless entry, you have the key here. And because it's a, it's a nice little fob, all you have to do is have it in your pocket. You have your hands full or whatever. You just simply walk up to the car, put your hand to the on the handle, and there's a little strip behind the handle here that you just tap your hand on it. You hear the car unlock and it opens right up. Open right up, and you hop into the car. And so let's say you get somewhere you park, you hop out of the car, you lock it. You don't necessarily want to pick up the key fob to lock the car. Now, I have it set for the car to automatically lock when it walk away, but if you don't have that setting on, you simply go to your handle, push the little button here on it, and it locks the entire car. You don't have to worry about it. Okay guys, so now that we're inside the car, let's talk about some of the interior options. And we're going to start up here with the digital dash. Now one thing I love about this car is the digital dash display. Um, it makes it a lot easier to read than your old analog style. You can clearly tell what your speed is. It has a nice tachometer that runs along the top edge of it. And also at the bottom here, you get a whole host of menu options which are convenient. So you don't have to take your eyes off the road or look at the main screen. You can just kind of look down and see. So I'll go through them in a second, but right now we have it set to tell me what my uh, current range of fuel is and my average fuel range. Now there's a menu button down here on the steering wheel just to the left that if we hit that, it's going to bring up all of our menu options. So if I go ahead and hit it once, it brings up the menu. Now we have our fuel range, we have our maintenance log, we have our turbo meter, we have a way to switch easily between miles and kilometers an hour, you have your nav settings, and then you have your media controls, whether you listen to radio, iPod, Android Auto, Apple uh, CarPlay, whatever, any kind of media or audio is going to be controlled right through here. So I'll go through them quickly. Oh, 
And I forgot, one of the other options you can have that I don't currently have selected in this menu option is the ability to access your phone through it. So, moving on, let me just scroll through those quickly so you can get an idea of what they look like. So, here we go. As I mentioned, there's our fuel range. Next up, we have our maintenance info. After that, we have our turbo meter, which is fun. Obviously, right now, the car's not moving, so we have nothing going on, but once uh, the car is actually moving, you can kind of get a sense of how your turbo spool is and how much boost you have based off the turbo meter. As I said, next up, you have easily a weighted change between kilometers an hour and miles an hour. So you just push and hold, it changes over. Push and hold again, it changes back. Pretty simple. And then next up, we have our nav system. Now, if you have your nav currently set, it's going to give you a display right up top here to tell you which direction you're going and how far into your next turn, where your exit is, blah, blah, blah. Um, but with this, you can also, without having to take your hands off the wheel and go to the main screen just over to our right, you can also program any of your destinations through there as well. Just simply hit the center button and the arrows, and you can have a whole host of options. Anyways, and as I said, you have your media. The audio's not on right now, but... As I said, if the radio was on, you can cycle through your radio station and everything that way. So, I mentioned the big screen. So, moving over to the big screen. Um, while the screen is nice and functional, there are... One of my bigger problems with this car is the infotainment system. Now, I'm not sure how many people have had this problem, but I've had the issue where I've actually had to have this whole thing replaced uh, at least three times now. First, it started off, the Bluetooth wasn't working, the radio wasn't working, there was a known problem, they fixed that issue, and then at one point the screen wouldn't work, so I've had to have the whole screen replaced. So, um, this whole thing isn't the way I bought it on day one, but apart from those small things, it is pretty good. Now, the one other issue I have, and I know many other people do, is this volume button on the side. Well, for the most part, the touchscreen is good. Um, sometimes, if you have a passenger in the car, they want to they want to control the volume or whatever, they're immediately going to go down here because you think most cars have a button, but no, that's the climate system. So this car does take a little bit of a learning curve to get used to, but once you get into it, it actually is pretty user-friendly. So sticking with this central screen, as I mentioned, it's a fully touchscreen display, so you have your radio on settings here, you have your home button to get to your main screen, which is here, you have your volume settings, your menu settings, and your back button. Now, as I said, it is very nice to get navigation. It is very nice and clear. So if you have your nav system on or anything, you can easily see where you're going. It all looks very nice. And apart from the little issue that I just mentioned, it does work very well. Now, if we hit climate, the climate button down there, we go into our climate control. You can do everything here. And one of my favorite features of this car is the ability to have dual zone climate control. So if we have our climate control on, Right now you can see it's both set at 22 degrees, but if I un if I push this to unsync it, say I want it at 22, but my passenger wants it warmer or colder, then they can independently turn up, turn up or turn down the the temperature on their side and have it comfortable. And you know if both of them are are off, and you want to get it back to one to one temperature, you simply put sync, and whatever the driver's side temperature is set to is what it's going to set the entire car to. Other things to note with the interior is that it has a good backup camera with good graphics. When you, you turn the wheel, it directs you where to go. Left left or right. The graphics are very good. I don't know how well they're going to show up on the camera. And you have three modes. You have you kind of your wide angle mode, your straight back mode, and you have kind of what I like to call curb mode. So you can look straight down and see how close your back of your car is to the curb or any kind of bump so that you don't back right up into it. And if you're driving down the, down the road, you, yeah, you're not quite sure what's in your blind spot to your right. Honda had you covered because they have what they call the lane watch camera. There's a little button on the uh, the left stock here, which is also the turn signal stock. If you go ahead and push that, it brings up the side view camera so you can see what's happening on your right side. Should you be trying to merge lanes? Now they don't have this on the left side because visibility out the left side is pretty good. But sometimes if you're looking over your right shoulder, you might not be able to see quite what's there. So this is just the one more assist that Honda built in, extended on these cars to help you out. If we move down, we have a wireless charging spot for your phone. Unfortunately, my phone does not support it, but I've had friends in the car whose phones do support wireless charging, and if yours does, it does work great. 
um, going down. Now, one of the gripes of this car that some people have is that while it has a turbo engine and it does have decent power, it runs through a CVT transmission, which while very good, you know, if you're a purist, you're probably going to want to prefer the manual transmission in this car or the SI, the Type R. But for just daily driving this car like I do, it is good. We have our regular driving modes and, you know, park reverse, neutral drive, sport, and low. I never really use low gear mode. Mostly I drive, I have it in drive mode, obviously. But if you want to get the full potential of the car, I suggest you put it in sport mode. Now, one of my other new favorite features of this car is this little button right here, which is the brake hold system. Now, essentially what the brake hold system does is when your car is at a full stop, you're at a red light, a stop sign, whatever, um, you put your foot firmly on the brake, apply the brake all the way, and push that brake hold button, and it's going to lock the brakes so you have your car sitting in place. Well, excuse me. Now, this isn't exactly the same as a parking brake because once you either push the button again to disengage or you simply put your foot on the gas pedal, it's going to disengage the brakes normally and allow you to drive. But say you're in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, your feet's tired, you don't want to have to hold the brake manually every single time. If you push the button, the system is always going to be on standby when you're rolling and as soon as you come back to a complete stop, you can take your foot off the brake knowing with the confidence knowing that the car is going to hold you in place. And also, apart from the brake hold system, we have the parking brake. It is an e-brake. Over on the right side, we have another button for eco mode. Now, I rarely drive the car in eco mode. I find it cuts power and while Yes, maybe it's good if you're on a long road trip to use it. If you just drive around the city or your town back and forth to work, you don't really need eco mode. If you move down from there, we have cup holders. We have two decent cup holders. The armrest is comfortable. It slides back to make more room. And if you have a bigger, this if it's two basically two standard size drinks. So you know if you have a large, extra large coffee uh, drink, whatever, it will fit in there. But if you have something a little bit bigger, like you know a big gulp or something, let's say from a 7-Eleven in the USA, you can pull it back and you have a bigger cup holder there. Now I currently have my iPod cable in there. There's a USB slot where you can plug in your iPod. There, and listen to your music. And did you guys know that in this car there is in fact an Easter egg? So I'll show you the Easter egg. So to get to it, you're gonna you're gonna lift up the center armrest. Um, you're going to want to make sure this is the couple of slid all the way up. If it makes it easier, you're going to want to slide this little uh, storage shelf forward all the way. Now, excuse my mess in the car a little bit here, but let's get rid of all the pens and stuff in the center here. And if we go ahead and we lift up this little plastic protector piece in our center console, Voila, we have a little bit of art on here. Now, I apologize about the dirt. I haven't cleaned my car in a while. But here's a little Easter egg, which kind of harkens back to Honda's whole heritage. Now, from what I've been told and I've seen other videos of, there are four different uh, pictures they have in your car. I believe this is the most common. I've checked some other cars at dealerships and people that I know. And they all have the same one. But from what I've heard, there are, uh, at least there are four pictures. There are three other ones than this. Now, I'll admit, I did not find the Easter egg on my own. I previously watched a Honda Pro Jason's review of this car around the time I was considering getting it and after I got the car to learn some of the features, and he told me that. So, this isn't something I found on my own. I did see it, but if you did not know about the Easter egg and you own one of these cars, now you can impress your friends with your knowledge. Okay, so that says it for everything up at the front of the car. Now, you might be wondering, if you're going to buy this, you're looking at this for your family car, your daily driver. You might be wondering, if you're going to sit in the back, what is the legroom like? Well, let me hop out and show you. Now, disclaimer, I am 5'11", and I currently have my driver's seat in the driving position. So, let's go hop in the back, and I'll show you just how much room this car does have. Okay, guys, so we hop out of the front, and you can see here, the door opens nice and wide to allow easy access to get into your vehicle. But, as I said, we're going to check out the rear seat room. Now, as I said before, I am 5'11". I currently have this seat set up in my driving position. So, let's go close the front, hop in the back. And, as you'll notice, uh, we'll get in, we'll close the door. And, as you'll notice, like I said, I have the seat set up in my driving position. And, I still have plenty of room with the door closed between the seat and my knees. And, also... If we go look this way, I have plenty of room between my head and the top of the and the top of the uh, the ceiling. So if you're a taller individual, 
Um, you might be a little bit uncomfortable back here, but me being 5'11", fairly average height, you can fit a family in here. Um, I know we've taken trips with myself, my parents, and my two grandparents in this car. And while it is a little bit cramped, um, five full-size adults do fit in here with relative comfort. Now also here while we're at the back, one of the features I love about this car, of course it comes standard with heated seats up at the front, but new for this model of Civic is the rear heated seats, which can be controlled from the center console right here. Now, this might not be such a big deal if you live in a warmer climate, but as I said, I do live in Canada. We're in the middle of winter right now, it's cold. So, well, I don't sit in the back of the car much. I know that my passengers appreciate being able to get in the back and have their seat warm so that your butt doesn't freeze when it's minus 20 degrees outside. Okay guys, so I know I keep going on and on and saying that it's winter time and it's cold, but that brings me to one of my next favorite features of this car, and that is the ability that it comes standard with a remote start system. Now this might not seem like such a big deal, but trust me, I didn't think it was either, but living in Canada in winter time, the ability to heat up my car at least five minutes before getting into before going off to work or whatever in the morning is a big deal. So let's show you guys how to do that. Okay guys, so the way to get the remote start feature to work is you have your key fob here, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to hit the lock button up top once and then you're going to hold this little circle button down for five seconds and let go. There you go, we get a nice cold start and that's how you use your remote, your remote start function. Okay guys, so there you go, that's how you start the remote, the car by the remote. But if you're wondering, I don't want to keep my car running for that long, is there a way to shut off the uh, the car by simply using the key? And yes, there is. The simple way to do that is, again, with your key fob, you just want to hold down the little circle start button, hold it for a couple seconds, point at the car, and the car shuts itself right back off. It's just that easy. It's another overview of the car. One of my favorite things of this thing of this car is all the new sporty lines. Now Honda wanted to make this kind of their more sporty car with the turbo engine and all of that and they have the lines to do it. I did not, like I said before, I'll be the first to admit I did not actually like the design of this car when I first saw it but obviously more and more grew on me and obviously I loved it enough that it's sitting here in my driveway as we speak. So one of the focuses of this car was more aero so everything from the way the hood shape is bent the way the mirrors flow and the way the lines curve down to the back makes for a better airflow. Now, because this car only has 174 horsepower, it's not the quickest car, but it does cut through the air pretty well. Now, one of my biggest issues with this car is, if Honda wanted to make it a sporty car, why, why Honda don't you give us better exhaust tips? I mean, look, the exhaust just kind of dies down there. Now, I get this is supposed to be a fuel efficient, everyday family car, blah, 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 but if they're going to make a sporty car to uh, play to the younger market, they should have given us at least the option to come with better tips. Now, I know with aftermarket exhaust and everything, you can get better ones, but from the factory, Honda, come on, you can do a better job than this, please. Okay, guys, so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this little review. I don't want to go fully, fully in-depth. I just wanted to kind of show you guys the car, give you my take on it, show you some of the cool features of it. Um, later on... I'll probably make another video on this. We'll actually go out for a drive and I'll show you what it's like to drive and all that. But for now, I just wanted to give you a quick overview. And I'm going to go inside because it's super cold out here. So thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to the channel. And just to let you guys know, I did not approve this message. Bye.